God and Moses both just have enormous respect for each other. White gladiator has the same right to Look, the judges are not. Even the Egyptian judges are impressed. Until recently, you claimed that the Earth revolved around the sun. Welcome to History Bites. I'm Rick Green. Nowadays, Canada is a tourist destination for Europeans and Asians. But centuries ago, Canada was a roadblock for Europeans destined for Asia. By the 1600s, explorers had realized North America wasn't Asia, and the Indians weren't really from India. So they kept trying to detour around the Americas to reach the real riches in the Orient. And there had to be a way around because well, because fortunes were at stake. The sailors who went searching for a passage were either very brave or stubborn, deceitful, and named Henry Hudson. Let's imagine TV had been around in the year 1611 as Henry Hudson plays Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and uses up all his lifelines. The British News Network Nightly News for June 3rd, 1611. Tonight, Hudson's ship returns without Hudson. Mystery or mutiny? American atrocities. Spanish conquistadors call it sport. Natives call it death by dogs. Plus, the new Bible is published. Seven years in the making, it appears King James has a bestseller on his hands. In entertainment, the songwriter who killed his wife and her lover has a hot hit on his hands. And Susan Derry will have the weather forecast. Good evening. I'm Lucinda Johns in London. He went searching for a passage to India. He found only mutiny and treachery. His ship Discovery, which should have been in China, is back home in England. It has no spices from traitors, just a spicy story from traitors. Gloria Hallelujah has the story of a shocking discovery. What a difference a year makes. A year, 10,000 miles, several deaths by starvation, a horrible winter, and endless fear. This week saw the return of Captain Henry Hudson's discovery, and it carried a shocking discovery. No Hudson, not even his son, James Hudson. Were you attacked by mermaids? Is there any reports of mermaid the attacks? Is sea monsters ate Captain Hudson. Did they fall off the end of the world, or were they killed attacks? by the Chinese? No, no. he was a captain. He was incompetent, Mr. Hudson. No, he no, endangered no, our lives. No, he no, endangered us. No, 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 a British government. I'm a good family. British with an incompetent. Are you sure? Okay, kids, I got the uh, top ten list here. Uh, which, uh, by the way, did I mention that uh, later on in the show we have the widow of one of the uh, expedition members with us? I think it's the widow of uh, John Thomas. Uh, did, did, did I mention that? Are, are you sure? Okay, well, uh, okay, whatever. It appears that the eight survivors of the crew will be charged with mutiny. We join a press conference already in progress. Innocent. How could they possibly be innocent? They freely admit that they set Captain Hudson adrift. What possible excuse could they have for that? Well, Maybe Captain Hudson was incompetent. Uh, what if they're, they're innocent? Incompetent? He came from a good family. How could hey, we can always eat snow cones. <laughs> yeah, number seven, the seven habits of highly seasick people. <laughs> number six, the green mile, followed by 8,000 white miles. <laughs> I'd pay to read that one, Paul. <laughs> What's to happen if, if, if we let the lower classes question us? What's next? Anarchy. No, no. These sailors must be given a fair trial, found guilty, and then brutally punished. I mean, if they hadn't mutinied, why right now at this moment we'd be enjoying the spices and silks from China. Everyone enjoys spices. I love silks. Number four, my heart will go on. The rest of me will freeze solid. <laughs> and number three, playing favorites, management tips to live and die by. And number two, eight men out, and I wasn't one of them. And the number one title of Henry Hudson's autobiography, The Idiot's Guide to Exploring. <laughs> When Henry Hudson's ship, the Discovery, limped back to England without Hudson, the authorities had a lot of questions. And the eight sailors who had survived the year-long ordeal had some pretty shocking answers. Sure, they were starving for food, but the media was hungry for scandal. Good evening. 
In an extra exclusive, we talked to Matthew Bennett about the captain who liked to watch, Hudson's Bay or Hudson's Gay. He said he wanted to see our chest to see what we had. We said the contents of our trunks were private. 24 men, no women, and all hands on deck. He was looking for a new passage, somewhere no man had been before. His job was commanding a ship, but his obsession was controlling seamen. Captain Hudson favored a John Thomas. He would do anything for a John Thomas. What was the real reason these old salts refused to obey orders? He was the captain's first mate. And then the captain decided he wanted a different mate. He, he wanted to see his chest, his sea, sea chest for food. He was afraid they were holding the food. What did you think? Will we ever know the truth? Will the sodomizing sailors get their story straight? It wasn't like that. And my name is Bennett Matthew, not Matthew Bennett. They mutiny and then sail back here. These guys had four months at sea to think up a convincing story. How hard could that be, huh? Uh, oh, Captain Hudson and the others? They met the Little Mermaid and her sisters and got hitched. They decided to settle down to a life of hydroponic farming. <laughs> They're over there filming a prequel to Titanic. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. In an exclusive interview, I talk with a God-feeling sailor who survived a hazardous voyage only to face accusations of mutiny, treason, and murder. Adrian, you and your cohorts are accused of the most heinous of sea crimes. Uh, no, never. We were just good friends who, who sometimes tried on each other's clothing. I meant mutiny. Oh, yeah, we did that. Mutiny against your own captain. Why? Well, the captain, he, he forced us. Twelve months at sea. No food, no shirts, no service. And all Captain Hudson could talk about is pressing on. With what? I understand you had to eat rotten cheese. At first, yeah. That, that was bad. Not as bad as the frogs and, and the moss. Don't get me wrong. Normally, I, I like the taste of moss, but this stuff tasted like damp, rotting wood. You ate moss? Uh, yeah, until we ran out. Then we ate damp, rotting wood. What do these morons say when they step ashore? We mutiny. Yeah, the whole hanging offense thing. Yeah, we uh, abandoned our mates to a horrible death. So uh, what's new here in Portsmouth? <laughs> now, I don't want to get off on a rant here, but the fact that eight guys couldn't come up with a halfway decent lie gives you an idea of the kind of tavern scrapings we have manning our ships. Eight mutineers, one ship, and a cumulative IQ that wouldn't give a barnacle a run for its money. Your husband, Philip Staff. The husband? The husband? What about him? He was the ship's carpenter on board Henry Hudson's vessel, the Discovery. Was he? Well, I wouldn't know nothing about it. He said he was going out for a drink and he ain't come back yet. He's made a discovery? No, he has entered the kingdom of heaven. Ooh, that is a discovery. I mean, he's dead. Dead? Bloody hell! Ashes like him, leaving me and the kids, and me and the family way. So, you're pregnant. Oh, what does this look like, gas? But your husband has been gone for over a year. Yeah, well, Mom, I was uh, old enough till he got back, you know. Uh, Crossing me legs and all. Look, what's your point? Uh, if you could use one word to describe Captain Hudson, what word would that be? Dead. But if he were alive today, what would you say to him? I'd say, Captain Hudson, I thought you were dead. And yet, when the crew mutinied, your husband chose to stay with Captain Hudson. He chose certain death rather than come home to you. Oh, no! I don't understand it. Well, uh, Mrs. Staff, I'll leave you to your grieving. Right, and thanks. Shut up, you bloody kids! Shut your pie holes! No! As always, it's the children who suffer the most. 
When we come back, some shocking discoveries about the crew of the Discovery. After they had set Henry Hudson adrift, the crew of the Discovery sailed home for England. Now, one sailor, Abacuck Prickett, had been keeping a log of the journey. Okay, if television had been there to report on the arrival of the remains of the Hudson expedition, well, then no doubt video would have been along on the voyage. I mean, who needs trained investigative journalists as long as everyone's got camcorders? Welcome to Hard Copy. I'm Maureen Boyle. They said their captain was incompetent. They said they had to mutiny to save themselves. They said it was life or death. But now, thanks to this home video footage, it appears that the crew of the Discovery were in fact telling the truth. Hi, I'm Henry Hudson, and this is a project to find a way to the Orient. It's my project. <laughs> Oh. It's Greenland! Man, look! It's Greenland, what I tell you! <laughs> Greenland? Why isn't it green then, huh? <gasps> look! It's the furious overfall! It's the strait that leads right to the riches of the Asian Empire! Oh, ho, ho. I told you, it's clear sailing from here on, man! Clear sailing? What do you call that? Oh, that's fog. Don't worry, it'll clear up after the fog. You've lost the map, admit it! Oh, this one is the way. This bay leads to a river that will take us straight to the Orient. I'm sure of it. Come on, this is just ridiculous. Mr. Jewett, sail up that river there. I'm sure it ends up in Japan. Icebergs ahead! Don't be Iceberg. ridiculous. How can you see icebergs through all that fog? Although I still think the whole mermaid seduction theory could be a possibility. Yes. Uh, why would you hire a captain who has had every voyage almost end in mutiny? Well, Ted, a, a voyage like this and a small ship, thousands of miles, crude instruments, it's very easy for a crew to lose heart and to harbor thoughts of mutiny. And so we wanted a captain who had experience with mutiny. And that was Henry Hudson Twitty. Ooh, see that mound of dirt? I think that could may well be Mount Fuji. Oh, Mr. Prickett, man the cannons in case we have to repel samurai swordsmen. Prince Henry, did you know that on every one of his earlier voyages, Captain Hudson turned his ship off course, lied to his crew, and tried to find a different route? Yes, yes we did. We admired his consistency. Some might call him underhanded and deceitful, but we felt he showed initiative. You have to understand, each time Captain Hudson went looking for a northeast passage, he failed and went chasing off after a northwest passage. So this time, when he said he was going to look for a northwest passage, we all assumed he would sneak off looking for a northeast passage, because that still seems the best bet, especially since we thought he'd fail by going northwest. But you must admit, we were right about that part. He did fail. You can accuse Henry Hudson of being a failure as a ship's captain, but no one could accuse him of being a coward. He sailed off again and again into the unknown. The maps he had were unfinished. And if he got into trouble, he'd be underwater. The saints only know that lad was nothing but trouble, so he was. Always complaining. And then when we travel always, are we there yet? Are we there yet? So he didn't enjoy traveling? Oh, he used to get cart sick. Puke his guts out, he would. Luckily, we never had much to eat, so it wasn't a lot. <gasps> this bay here, this must be China. Look at all those Chinese pagodas. All the green ones. All the green Chinese pagodas. They're pine trees. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, Peking is dead ahead. Just around that next point of land. Or the next one. Me Robbie said Hudson was the worst captain he ever knew. Where are we going today, says me Robbie. Oh, you're in, says Captain Hudson. And then, before you can spit a St. Christopher medal out of porthole, he's trying to sail to America. Always trying his navigational tricks, so he was. We're going to Dublin, says his nibs. Well, it's looking to me like we're heading for the Orient over the pool, says me Robbie. Oh, for sure, and these are Irish waters, says himself. Then tell me, Henry Hudson. Uh, if I could interrupt your quaint Irish prattle, Mrs. Oh. Jewett, uh, how was it that nobody else noticed the change in direction? 
It was something to do with the fact that his high and mightiness wouldn't let anyone near the sex tent. Imagine a filthy sex tent right there on the decks. I think you made sextant. It's a navigational instrument. And there I was, thinking Robbie might meet himself a nice wife there. But no. <laughs> and then there's his choice of crew, hiring that guy Jewett as first mate again. Probably figured Jewett used up all his mutiny cards the first two times they played really, really slow boat to China, huh? <laughs> Come on, Henry, how many times you need to divorce your wife before you realize it's not working out? Uh. Yeah, if there is a more damning evidence for the lack of leadership in our society today, I'll eat Ben Johnson's cod piece. <laughs> I understand you're now pushing to have the area that Captain Hudson was cast adrift in named after him. Yes, that's right. We feel it will be a fitting tribute to call it Hudson's Bay. After all, it's a large watery body, and in all probability, right now, uh, so is Henry Hudson. Look at those waves! Those are the exact same waves! We're going in circles! We're going in freaking circles! Ooh, look at the tiny scrubs of trees. I'm sure those are Japanese bonsai trees. Ooh. Steady as she goes, man. This river has to lead to Korea. Oh, you're Stop arguing with me. Every time you open your mouth, more of your teeth fall out because of that stupid scurvy thing. We covered the key piece of evidence that will clarify exactly what transpired aboard the doomed ship during those last few months. Uh, I have here the ship's uh, black box data recorder. This could be the key. Uh, sir, this is the key. Right. All of our ships are equipped with these special ship's data recorders. It records location, instrument readings, and crew conversations. Oh, what's that sound? It's weird. It's freaking me out. What is it? Out of the ice floes rubbing against the hull of the ship. We're trapped in the ice! Trapped! Oh, well, luckily I plan to spend the winter here in China. Stay tuned as the mutiny trial moves from the court of public opinion to the court of England. Henry Hudson's final voyage was his fourth attempt to discover a sea route to Asia. He'd searched northeast, northwest. He'd even tried to sail straight over the North Pole. Hudson ignored skeptics and naysayers because he possessed the kind of grit and determination that we call pig-headed. Yeah, Henry might have been a good navigator and a bold explorer, but he lacked people skills. Lunch time. Here's a portion for you, son. Oh, thanks, Dad. And there's an equal portion for you, Mr. Jewett. Sorry, that's it. Good news, man. The ice is breaking up. Yeah! That means we can set sail again for China. Yeah! Yeah! One small detail that adds a great deal of credence to the claim by the eight survivors that Captain Hudson was in deep over his head. In this exclusive interview, I spoke with one of the survivors. He asked to remain anonymous. We didn't want to go on. But the captain showed us his maps and showed us we'd gone further than any Englishman ever had before. He showed you his maps. Don't British officers just order the crew to do something with no questions asked? Yeah, but he wasn't like that. Because he cared about his men? No, because we kept asking questions. Like, how are we supposed to get through solid ice? Mr. Sylvanus's story seems logical. But naval experts suggest the fact that Captain Hudson had to convince his men to push on indicates that he was not master of his ship. If true... Ooh! See those large white bears? Those are Chinese pandas. I'm sure of it! Look what I found! Oh my god! What is it? It's the last of the firewood! Ah! Robbie says, get away with ya. That coastline was never the Emerald Oil. Tis County Mayo, says Henry. If oh, I may... Oh, tis the Russian islands of Nova Zemnia, says me, Robbie. And there's not an Irish girl to be seen. Then him in the brass buttons, he uh, says... Mrs. Jewett, if Captain Hudson was such an incompetent commander, why did your son keep signing on with him? He always says, no matter how bad a sailor's life might be, it was better than starving to death. Mm. By the way, what happened to him? He starved to death. 
There we go. That's China, that big pink wiggling hill. Go! You have claimed Captain Hudson was incompetent. No, that was Mr. Jewett. Towards the end, he had some bowel control problems. That's incontinent. Oh, North America. I mean, he didn't know what he was doing. Oh, no. Poor Mr. Jewett was so embarrassed that he tried to keep working. He kept asking us to carry him to the poop deck. Let's get back to Captain Hudson. Why was such a self-centred captain chosen to command this ship? Why? Why? Greed, that's why. Rich nobles and investors who just want a captain in fancy clothes who can speak all that coherent word stuff and they don't give a damn about the working sailor who gets where he's going for on the planks and earns a hard day's sweat of his elbow grease in one way or another with a wife and children on half sides of the world away with clothes up over their ears in 50-foot waves. What about them, eh? What about them? If China isn't around that next peninsula, I'll eat my hat. No! Eat your own hat! This one's mine! Hey, took my strawberries. What was the worst straw? What made you decide to mutiny? Mr. Jewett had been talking about it for days. How many days? About a year's worth. These sailors have to be found not guilty. We need them in our next expedition to the Northwest Passage. As for Henry Hudson, his incompetence has disgraced the entire British class system. Don't blame the sailors one little bit. No, salt of the earth, those boys. Fine British lads, hail fellow well met. Robert Bylot, Abacuck Prickett, and all the others were eventually tried and found not guilty. The courts believed their story. All they believed about Hudson was his theory that there was a Northwest Passage to the Orient. So the discovery was sent back five more times to search for it, with some of the lucky survivors ordered to go along to help guide the way. Hey, <laughs> you boys know all the spots to avoid. As for Hudson, he had Hudson's Bay named after him, his legacy to history that, like an Arctic frost, bites. Now, normally I wouldn't give a rat's ass if 50 shiploads of these mouth breathers sailed off the edge of the world. But these maritime morons are our nation's emissaries to foreign civilizations. Talk about putting your worst foot forward. Why don't we just tap two Union Jacks onto the sloping foreheads of the 500 village idiots and send them swimming off into the Atlantic? Now, if you excuse me, I have a meeting with the king. Uh, uh, what if they're, they're innocent. That's, that's it. How, how can you? Sorry, sorry. It's actually this way. Oh, yeah.